Hello. Welcome to the Romero Arts Center's Perspective Lesson. I'm Larry Weinberg, and I'm going to be leading you through a great lesson about how to create perspective in art. We're going to be doing a one-point perspective lesson, and we're going to be using one of the most famous paintings of all time to do it. It's considered the third most famous painting, and it's The Scream by Edouard Munch. Now, The Scream is a painting that was painted in 1839. Dang, forget. Just get rid of it. All right. He did these paintings. This one is the scream that everybody has probably seen and pantomimed a lot. We also, I wanted to show you a few other ones that he had completed. And he was able to create some very colorful, beautiful paintings. Now, what's interesting about Munch's work is that for being in Norway, his paintings are very bright. They're very vibrant. They're very uh, unique in that way. He was what is considered an expressionist. And I'm going to show you a couple more paintings by him if I can. My book is all taped together here. And here's a couple, another one. Here's the same bridge that he had used and did a different painting. Um, and I wanted to show you a picture of... Here he is. There's a picture of the artist. It's always good to get to know the artist a little bit. And then I wanted to show you another one of his pictures here. This in his gallery. Here's a picture of Edward Mook. There, very pensive. Then here's the other one. Now take a close look at this picture, okay? You're looking at it. Look at the bottom, the floor. He's wearing some boots. And he's walking around in snow. Yes, he's painting outdoors, but he's indoors. He's in his studio, and he's painting. And you can see the size of some of his paintings are huge. He's working on a smaller one on his easel. Now, to get enough light to paint in the 1890s, and this is when this picture was taken, he has no roof. And that's why there's snow on the ground. Very fascinating here. Cool, huh? All right, so... I want to talk a little bit about perspective and how we're going to be looking at this today. We're going to be taking uh, the, the screen and showing you how he made things that were farther away look smaller and things that were closer up look larger. And the way he did that was he used a vanishing point. Okay. And that's one of the key elements when you're looking at any kind of uh, perspective drawing. A lot of perspective drawings will have multiple um, vanishing points. Today we're working with just one, one vanishing point. Also, a key in an outdoor painting, if you're doing an outdoor work, is going to be a horizon line for your perspective drawing. 
The other key elements are vertical lines and horizontal lines. Now, what you have to do with these lines, and I'm going to show you with my trusty ruler here, my big ruler, is the line has to be, to be a vertical line, it has to be perfectly straight up and down. It has to be perfectly horizontal for a horizontal line. And the reason why that has to be the case is that's what creates the perspective. When you look at drawings, your eye is going to try to trick you. What's going to happen is your eye is going to start making those lines instead of being straight up and down like this, they're going to start tilting a little bit. So you want to keep checking your work as you're going, making sure your lines are straight up and down when they're supposed to be vertical and making sure your lines are straight across and not kind of tilting one of these ways when they're supposed to be horizontal. And we'll get into that a little bit further here. But what we want to do then to make this work is we use the diagonal lines. The diagonal lines will be going through the vanishing point. And I'm going to be demonstrating that through this drawing right here that he has from the screen. And I'm just going to do an overlay. We'll see if I can. So one of the things you can do is you can take the picture, and that's what I'm using here. I overlay it with um, tracing paper. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be looking at the lines of his bridge. And his lines of his bridge, you can see here, you probably can't, is that the vanishing point is right on the edge. And if we follow those lines of the bridge, they all converge on the single vanishing point, which is basically he had it set off his canvas. We're going to put it on our picture today. But that's how you can take any picture that you see that uses perspective. You can take a tissue paper like this, lay it over, Follow the lines with a marker or a pencil to see where the vanishing points are. And you can figure out how the different artists use perspective to create their work and give tremendous depth to a two-dimensional painting or drawing. All right, so let's get started. First thing we want to do today, we want you guys to put your name and date. Today's date is, for me, it's going to be the 4th. April, and it's the 8th, and it is 2020. Okay, so I have the date on the top. I'm going to put my name, and if you remember, it's Larry. I'm going to put it right down here, Larry. Okay. Now, this is just my piece of paper, guys. I don't, you don't have to draw a rectangle here. You just want to, I'm just going to draw it out so people can see it. There we go. And the first thing I want you guys to do is we want to create horizon line. Now, the horizon line is going to be, as you can see, it's right up along here. So come down maybe about a quarter of the way, about right here, and come straight across. We just want to create our horizon line. Okay. Now, even though our horizon lines here, our vanishing point is going to be right over here. It's going to be right there, and I'm going to put VP there. Can you guys see that? The VP is right over there, and this is the point in which all the things are going to end up coming into it. So what we want to do here, guys, is we're going to draw a couple of lines to start with. We want to start with our bridge. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to come across and we're going to bring up, this is going to be our first straight line. And what we want to do is we want to bring this up, oh, not too high, about right there. Okay, and come back down. Now, for this, you can use a ruler or not. I'm going to use a ruler just so you can get used to it. So I'm going to come and I make sure you want to check, make sure it's straight. This one is. 
The first one's easy to be straight. And the reason why is because we don't have any perspective yet. So I'm coming here with my lines. Okay, my vanishing point is right over there, as you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I need to come from this point right here. To the vanishing point. I'm just going dot to dot. So it's this dot here, to this dot here. I didn't quite do it because I'm. I can bring my. I'm, bringing, I'm cheating there, I'm getting that down. So we have our first line there. Now, what we want to do is we want to have this so that the next line is going to be the top rail. And it starts right here and it comes in to the vanishing point. And then we're going to come down, oh, about that far. And we're coming in with another railing. This is the railing of the bridge. And they all are going into that same vanishing point. Then we're going to come from the bottom, and then it's coming actually off of the page here because this railing shows it coming, again coming into the vanishing point. Okay, so now we should have our railing starting, and the railing is coming from here and going into the vanishing point. Okay, everybody's got their vanish point. Now, there's, as you can see, there's like floorboards. The, 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 it's a wooden bridge. So what to do is the wooden bridge, and I'm gonna use a green marker here to see if this green one will work. And I'm going to come with these, yep, oh yeah, nice. Floorboard in here. They all have to go into the vanishing point. Okay, so we have our bridge, our railing. Now to complete our railing, what we wanna do is we wanna add some uprights to come in here. And so these will come in between. So the first one that we're gonna do is about a bit the way down the road. So we come down and we come with a railing. These have to be straight up and down. Okay, I'm gonna do another one right over here. A little bit shorter, oops. And I'm going to do another one way, way down here. So as you can see, we should have our perspective coming all the way down. As you can see, these are getting smaller. They're getting closer together as we do it. That one didn't turn out so good. I'm going to fix this one here. There we go. All right. Now, everybody should have the starting here of this. And then what we want to do is we're going to do a little bit of a background back here. You can do it as a city. You can do it as these little shapes, these kind of rolling shapes. I'm just going to come over here, making this background. And the lake is just kind of coming right there. All right. So let's do a couple of figures now. So the figures are going to be going straight up and down. We don't want them tilting at an angle. We're going to do the back figures, these two standing figures first. So all we want to do, I'm going to come up a little bit higher here. I'm going to erase a little bit here so that we cannot get that. And I'll come up and I'll do this figure, figure number one here, just with an oval. And shoulders, they're wearing these long coats.
arms. So I have figure number one, a little bit hard to see. You get figure number one there. Figure number two is gonna be behind him and it comes right over here. I'm getting, it's a little bit shorter. I'm gonna give him a hat. And again, it's like they're wearing these long coats. They're over here. Just making two figures at the end of the bridge there. It's not really the end of the bridge, but the end of our pictures bridge. So now we're all set for the screen. Yes, this fun part here. So what we're going to be looking at is that we can see our figure is going to be somewhere up in this area. And I'm going to come... This is one of those ones when I teach this lesson, I like people to either make it, they can do it as a self-portrait, they can do it exactly this kind of ghostly figure, they can do it as a character they've developed. It's up to you, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you the shapes to do it. So I'm gonna come over right about this area right here, and I'm gonna start with an oval for the head. If my marker will continue. So, and I'm doing more of an oval. Now, if you wanted to do it like it is, it's more of a skull shape, but we're gonna do it a little bit as an oval here. And then we have his neck. We're gonna do elbows, his shoulder. So I kind of come up. So we've got the neck, so we come down here. See if I've got another black marker that might work a little bit better. And I'm gonna come and I'll just do the shoulder by coming up and coming down. And then the same one, I'm going to kind of come over. I'm going to follow down. And then we can go ahead and we can erase. I just want to get the basic shape here of our character. And then let's go ahead. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and add Maybe we can go ahead and add some eyes. I'm going to do this kind of as a self portrait of Larry. Get my brows here. My character today is going to have glasses on. And then for the mouth, we want to get it open. And then I'm going to have my hands coming up and going over my face a little bit. So I come in, my hand, and, and then I go ahead and add the sleeve right there. So I come over with a little bit of an oval around this sleeve here. So I'm kind of coming around. And then I'm going to come with this elbow coming in front of that shoulder. And I'm always doing this in layers. So I draw lightly so I can kind of come over. And on the other side, I have the same thing. And this one's coming a little bit behind. So the hand comes up, follows over. And again, I want my hand coming in. So I go around right there. I come down. My elbow there. So we have our shape there. So we have kind of working through, and then I want to make the neck giving, you can give them long coat, just getting the basic shape. Now here is where you can start adding some of your fun things. So you have the basic idea of the person, it can be a self-portrait, long hair, so I'm giving, he's not going to be bald today, he's going to have some hair there. And then, if you want to, in the background, you can make this, make it, these little bolts back here, there can be maybe a bigger one over here. Just giving some ideas of 
the waves and the waves can be kind of coming and going. But we can add our own little details here to make it our own. So the idea, just kind of reviewing what we went over today, is by creating this vanishing point back there, we created the bridge. Our horizon line gave it a point of reference that really helps tell us the story. Our figures that are coming straight in front of us also give us point of perspective. We need all these points to make the project work. It's fun to take a, a project like that's so famous like the Scream and create a really exciting uh, um, perspective. And it's one of those ones you can do over and over and keep changing it and trying new things. Sometimes you'll have a dog on the bridge, cat on the bridge, you know, your favorite animal. And so the elements of art that we did, perspective, obviously we use line, shape, color. We didn't, you're talking about, but you can add a lot of different colors to it. Being an expressionist artist, the colors were not uh, real. They were more of an expression of what he thought being an expression. So they're unreal colors. Um, again, put your name and date on all your work. And it'd be great to see some of those things. So if you uh, uh, finish this project, I'd love to see them at info at rumriverart.com. Send me a picture. That'd be awesome. And again, this is uh, Rum River Art Center. You can check out other lessons at www.rumriverart.com. Take care.